Hi everybody, this is Paul Gerard. I'm a student loan consultant working with the American Dental Education Association, ADEA. And this recorded module is on interest rates and how they work on your student loans. In this short recorded module, we'll take a look at some important reminders about interest rates and also capitalization, what it is, how it works, and how often it happens on your student loans. We'll take a look at how the interest rates actually work on federal, campus-based, and private loans, and also look at the trends on recent rates and also what the current interest rates are going to be on your student loans for dental school. Finally, we will close this module with some tips on how to reduce the impact of high interest rates and capitalization on repayment. Now we start with some important reminders. Up until 2006, interest rates on federal student loans were variable. But starting in 2006, the rate structure changed on federal loans. And so now any interest rate that you get on your direct unsubsidized or direct plus loan will be fixed for the life of the loan. It will never change. Most of the loans you borrow during dental school are what are called unsubsidized, meaning the interest begins to accrue or build up at disbursement and will accrue all the way through school and your grace period. This is what causes the balance to be so high when you are done with school and when you are entering repayment. So once again, most of the loans you borrow for dental school are unsubsidized. The AAMC ADEA Dental Loan Organizer and Calculator called DLOC always uses current interest rates. So one of the great things about this remarkable repayment tool or repayment resource for you is that it will always have the current interest rates based on when the loan was dispersed. Now you can't talk about interest rates without talking about capitalization. Capitalization is where the accrued and unpaid interest, all that interest that's building up during school and during your grace period is added back to the original amount that you borrowed, resulting in a higher principal balance. The easiest example I can think of is, let's suppose you borrowed $10,000 and the interest rate was a whopping 10%. And let's suppose that capitalization occurred annually. This would simply mean that after one year, the $1,000 of interest that had accrued on the $10,000 you borrowed would be added to the $10,000, and now your principal balance is $11,000, and the 10% interest rate is now charged on a higher amount. That's why capitalization is clearly not something that works in your favor. That leads to the logical question, when does capitalization occur? It almost always occurs at repayment, for example, after the grace period. If you take out a direct unsubsidized loan your first year of dental school and you go straight through dental school for four years and you have your six month grace period, all the interest that builds up over that four and a half year period of time will be added back to the principal balance at repayment. Capitalization can also occur when borrowers who are using what are called income-driven repayment plans switch plans or are late recertifying the repayment amount under their income plan. There's much more information on this on the income-driven repayment plan module. With income-driven repayment plans, you have to renew eligibility and your payment amount every year. And if you're late doing that, interest can capitalize at that time. It's very important to try and minimize when capitalization occurs by paying the interest along the way, if at all possible. Now let's take a look at the interest rates on federal direct loans. This would be the direct unsubsidized and direct plus, also known as grad plus. For many of you, these two loans will comprise the bulk of, if not all of, your student loan portfolio. On these loans, the rates change on new loans dispersed on or after July 1 of any given year, and then they remain fixed for the life of the loan on those loans. What this means is you go through four years of dental school. Let's suppose you take out four direct unsubsidized loans. Depending on when those are dispersed, you could end up with four different loans with four different interest rates on those loans when you graduate. 
Note that the maximum rate on new direct unsubsidized loans is 9.5% and the maximum rate on new direct plus loans is 10.5%. By the way, you have already picked up on this, I suspect. The interest rate on direct plus loans is always a full point higher than on direct unsubsidized loans. So once again, your takeaway here is that the rate changes on new loans every July 1. Now, some of you may have what are called campus-based loans. This depends on the school you attend and the availability of these loans at your school. Federal Perkins loans have a 5% fixed rate. Some of you may have Federal Perkins loans from college or perhaps from a post back program. Health profession student loans also have a 5% fixed rate, as do loans for disadvantaged students called LDS. Institutional loans, these would be loans that came straight from your school, from perhaps private funds, that will depend on the terms assigned by the school. So most campus-based loans are at 5% fixed. If you have an institutional loan, you'll need to check with your school about the interest rate. Let's talk for just a moment about interest rates on private loans. As you may already know, you do not need to borrow a private loan for dental school because you can borrow up to the full cost of attendance at your dental school with a combination of direct unsubsidized and direct plus minus any other financial aid that you have. But some of you may have private loans from college or perhaps a post back program. Some of you may actually be considering taking out a private loan for dental school, but we would strongly encourage you to talk with your financial aid officer before you do that. Private loans can have fixed or variable rates that depends on the lender and your eligibility. If you happen to have private loans with variable rates, you really do need to know how often the rate can change and is there a maximum rate allowed? In other words, is there a cap in terms of how high the interest rate could go? You also need to know if it's a variable rate, the impact of the rate change on future payments and how much notice do you get about the changes in the monthly payment amount based on the change in the interest rate. Common sense stuff, but if the interest rate changes, you need to know how soon your payments are going to change, especially if the payments are going up. And one very important thing to ask your lender if you have a private loan with variable rates is how often capitalization occurs on your private loan. We talked about capitalization on an earlier slide. Now this chart shows you some of the recent interest rates and also the current rates on direct unsubsidized, which are occasionally called Stafford loans and direct plus also called grad plus the rates this year for direct unsubsidized and direct plus loans dispersed on or after July 1, 2017 for the 2017 18 academic year are 6% fixed and 7% fixed. Once again, note that direct plus is always a full point higher than direct unsubsidized. If you look at the chart, you'll note that the interest rates actually went down for a couple of years before they went back up this year. They didn't go up a full percentage point, but they did go up. So once again, the rates this year, 6% fixed for direct unsubsidized and direct plus at 7%. Now we close this short repayment module with some tips on how to negate the impact of high interest rates and capitalization on repayment. First of all, the most obvious one, never borrow more money than you really need. We mentioned this on an earlier slide, but just because you can borrow up to the full cost of attendance minus other aid with a direct unsubsidized and direct plus loan, that doesn't mean you have to. So never borrow more money than you really need. If at all possible, pay the interest or some of the interest on your unsubsidized loans before it capitalizes that repayment. That will certainly help keep the total repayment cost down. Target any voluntary and additional payments on your student loans against the highest interest rate loans that you have in your student loan portfolio. And without question, the best way to reduce the impact of high interest rates and capitalization is to aggressively pay your student loans back after you graduate from dental school. So some tips on how to negate the impact of high interest rates and capitalization on repayment. 
We hope the information in this module has been helpful. Please remember that responsible borrowing leads to responsible repayment. And on behalf of the American Dental Education Association, best wishes for every success in dental school and in your dental school careers.